Come on in the room. Yeah, come on. Dolores, I done sent you the invite. Now, is you in the country? Or your, your, um, your button's not working? I see no one, too. He must be ignoring us. Not What's... he about to... Dep- <laughs> Don't start. Do not start. I'm looking um, for Shay, but I don't think I see me. I'm her yet. Get this man together in this tweet. And Craig, Craig said he coming today, but I don't see him yet either. But I'll keep looking as okay. you get started. Well, thank y'all for joining us. It is conference time. It is co- well, it is conference tournament time. We are excited. Got some good, hopefully, basketball on the way. We had a great weekend. Um, anybody still? Having a uh, riding on high from the live committee spaces this past weekend. How y'all feel about that? <laughs> Glory, hallelujah! It, we had church up in there. Oh, come on, revival! <laughs> we had revival. These people so churchy, y'all. We sitting there and we letting everybody ask questions, y'all. And this random white lady, so sweet, she goes, "Kadisha, I just want you to know, every time you you played, I prayed for you." I said, "Oh Lord, y'all, here we go." I said, here we go. <laughs> I had to get up and shout on that one. I said, oh, I said we can't escape it. Because the prayers of a right avail of much. Of much. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's the way she said it, though. Like, it was yeah. just like. And she pointed and tell. said the head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She said, I prayed for you. Like, like the church that she goes to got some oil. Okay. <laughs> But we really do appreciate everybody who came out. If you were in Columbia, we had a really good time. Um, some of you all got some goodies um, that you were able to leave with, so we appreciate that. And so can't wait till we have another event that you all are able to pull up on. Wait, how you go? Pull up on me. And so, um, yeah. Pull I up guess. on me. Pull up on me. <laughs> hey, Brandon. Hey, Brandon. Okay, so... um. So I guess what was each of you your game of the weekend, if any? Like what games really had you like, mm, didn't see that coming, or some like, okay, yeah, they they did what they needed to do. I ain't even get to see nothing. <laughs> but when I got back to the to home and saw Virginia beat Virginia Tech, I said, okay, girlies. So it would be that one, even though I ain't get to see it. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, because yeah, some of y'all was traveling until the wee not, hours of the night. Yeah, I did watch it, um, but definitely Virginia, Virginia Tech, simply, like, for two reasons. Um, Virginia Virginia also got a win over Louisville the week prior, um, and um, the amount of people that showed up and, like, really supported that team and a home game and a rivalry game, even though that team isn't necessarily guaranteed a tournament spot, I think they have some tournament wins, but... They just don't have the record. Um, as of now, I was just really happy with like how they put the season together um, for Coach Mock. Um, so yeah, I, that was a, a really, really big win, especially with the majority of their best players being underclassmen. Um, they that was like a okay next year we on your ass type of win, and I'm really excited for what they can do next year. So what you're saying is 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 um... Coach Mox going to take over. Well, it, are they considered the DMV? Because, yes, I know the V. You know, some people, they say if you go too south, they're so. not in the DMV. Mm, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, not really. They they, they out there in Virginia. That's no mind, no mind say part of the woods. Ooh. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, if they were the V in the V, <laughs> um, do you see that being the new hot spot? You, um, you know, over the likes of the Tex and Merlins and Georgetown? If you were, it could be, especially be- because I know, um, I mean, it depends on what kind of coach she is, right? Because I know one of the hangups that pe- the kids say about Brenda, she's not personable, she's not relatable. And if you got a black woman running shit there, it could happen, but I think it takes some time. Yeah, I think <laughs> recruiting-wise, they've done a good job of getting people in um, Johnson is like a, you know, that's that's the type of player where you bring somebody like that to your program, you you gonna see some return on investment at some point. Um, I like the Paris Clark move to Virginia. 
Um, and I just think they have a nice vibe. And let's not forget, like, she was extremely, their coach was extremely successful at Missouri State. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's going to Virginia just to step up. But I think she's still, like, she needed time to, like, really get her, put her foot in the ground and, like, stand on two feet. Um, and some injuries kind of prevented that this season. But the signs are there. Um, so, I mm, mean. Because she replaced Kelly at Missouri State and then yep. went to Virginia and now showed that she could possibly be a better recruiter. Sorry, Tennessee fans. Sorry. Oof, I just ate that up. Sorry. But, yeah, she cooking. Okay. So, now, is Mir done? No. Oof. So she has another year too. Yeah, because she didn't. She hasn't played. Mm. Sorry, okay. B, to go back to the question you asked earlier about it being. I don't know if over Maryland and well Georgetown got a lot going on, and I want to give them a shout out because they continue to win games through a tumultuous season. Mm-hmm. But um, I think that a, not a dark horse, but those who know, I think Temple is going to get a lot of people up in Philly. Mm-hmm. Diane is there, and she know like yeah, Diane yeah, know the streets. Yeah, That's yeah. a legend. So yeah, I yeah. think between Virginia, UVA, and Temple, it's gonna get tricky. Cause wasn't she the coach at Riverdale? Look at you! Come on, where your new balance is at? Lo? You, I had him on nine nineties on the day. You know me. Oh, yeah, she was coaching Riverdale. She was an assistant for Maryland. Obviously, like she um. There's a big reason why JJ is where she is now. Mm-hmm. So when you got them two and it's only a few hours away, it's it's gonna get tricky. Maryland gonna have to tighten up. Okay, okay. So uh, we're gonna go into a quick recap then of um, the conference champs over the weekend. Um, undefeated, but under the radar. You're 29. Well. Some of your uh, 29 and old South Carolina Gamecocks. So far, what do you think about the season? I know we've often we've often mentioned many times in regards to, you know, coming in, not a lot of expectations. Hell, the coaches and players said that, you know, they didn't, in their words, see the vision. And fast forward to now the start of March, they are undefeated in the regular season. And for them, I'm pretty sure that they will take this as a successful season judging, especially compared to where they were expected. What do you all think about this South Carolina program so far? And then obviously they ran the table in the regular season to claim um, consecutive undefeated SEC conference championships. I need to go last because I got what, what to was say. your What was the question, B? I missed it. I'm sorry. Hold on. Is it is Lowe back on stage? Yeah. Can uh, you hear me? Yeah, she asked, what was the question again? Can you say it one more time? Okay, here now. Okay, so basically, what is what was your overall um, thoughts on South Carolina's performance so far? Um, because, of course, you know, going back to the beginning, it was, you know, an, an, an unsure, a season of unsurety in regards to what they would look like sure, after replacing mm-hmm. so many people. And then, you know, with so many younger faces on the team to go 29-0. Oh, um, I think it's dope. I think it's a testament to the X's and O's coach that Don Staley is. Um, because not only Say it again. I think it's a testament to the X's and O's coach that Don Staley is. Um, because or and a delegator, because her staff got it together too, right? Um, I think not only she brought new five like a five new new starters but she completely changed how that offense looks yes she still is a we gonna go inside coach but she changed everything so not only x's and o's but adjusting the x's and o's making i mean she changed everything you got a new line whole new lineup now you playing people off the bench you playing chess not checking stuff and this person for this person this person for this person this person for this person so i think it, it the irony of it all is like I said earlier, the goal post, we watching the goal post move in real time. Um, you said this is boring. She comes back with a with a new, you know, got one of the best three point shooters in the country. They're shooting threes now. Um, they've won through defense, they've won through offense. So I think it's just a testament to how good she is. And I think she's grown as a coach too. I think this is probably her best coaching job in my opinion. Um and she's just doing a damn thing. So it's very interesting to see how this how this goal post is just just a wiggling child is moving. It's 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 so sad. Um, she's a strong woman, but who child? 
But yeah, I, I think this is one of her better coaching jobs, and I'm proud of the girls. They did what they had to do. They figured it out, and it hasn't always been pretty, but they're getting it done, and you can't complain. Close games or not, some people taking L's, they didn't. So, hey. Yana? Um, I agree with everything Lo said. Um, it's been an incredible thing to watch. Um, because, you know, we still see them growing as the season goes on. And I think sometimes um, a lot of people kind of just, well, lately they've been saying, well, it's just South Carolina. They're supposed to win. But that wasn't the case when the season started. Like a lot of people had this team with a big question mark because, like Lo said, it was a brand new group of starters brand new people bringing efforts off the bench like it's a brand new team and we've heard it from Khadija we've heard it from uh Breezy we've heard it from coach like they didn't even expect to be where they are right now you know so to see them um do what they're doing and still be learning in the process has been really fun to watch um sometimes stressful as a south carolina fan but still been really fun to watch like we've seen ashlyn continuing to grow like ashlyn you know she once she got that starting role when camilla went to uh brazil she like just blossomed into the player we all knew she could be we're seeing sanaya starting to step up in her role we're seeing um breezy continuing to grow in her confidence in malaysia like just from where she was at the start of the season to now is insane and same with Tessa. So like, like Lo said, it's been an amazing coaching job from uh, Don and her staff. Um, and it's been an amazing just effort from the team to kind of stick together throughout all of this and just keep getting better. Craig, go ahead. <clears throat> hey, what's up, y'all? I was just saying, um, they played every damn body. Like I don't, I don't, I don't get how it's boring to watch at this point. But they played everybody in every conference, every high valley, every low this or that. Whoever you root for, they played them. So that was just my take. So what you said is basically, Don don't duck smoke. The smoke duck her. Very much so. Give it up for Craig, y'all. He was finally able to make it. Give him a round of applause, y'all. We are happy to have you here, Craig. Don't make me cry. Don't make me cry. <laughs> Go ahead, Dolores, because you said you wanted to be last. Yes, I have to come down the list. Um, I had a thread for the girls, but I spelled Lay's name wrong, so I had to delete the, the thread. But um, first and foremost, let me say that I was talking to one of the staff members at the little, at our get together. And as a Carolina fan, this was probably my favorite season to be a Carolina fan because genuinely it has been the most stress-free, low anxiety, relax and just enjoy hoop season I've ever experienced as a Carolina fan. And it's, and that's such a new feeling because we came off of four years where the freshies really played with a chip on their shoulder and pressure, like whether it was self-imposed, whether it was trying to battle against everything that people said about them, whether it was the Aaliyah picture crying, whether it was the COVID season, not getting an opportunity to play in the championship. They just always played with pressure and they ended their career with one of the most talked about hoops games in women's basketball history and they didn't win and they didn't return. They said, you know, we've done our four years. We're going to go off and be pros. And so coming to the season, we came into the season with a new roster, like a new roster. Like I always think about that conversation that Breezy, Raven and Aaliyah had when they were talking to media after the Iowa loss and Aaliyah was basically like, I'm passing the torch to Raven. And then in the locker room, Breezy was like, it's my time to step up. And I can genuinely say, I did not think this team would be a, I, I thought sweet 16 or bust. I didn't think undefeated. I thought we would probably get second or third in conference. And I thought we would take some major L's this season, but be competitive. But this team came into the year with no pressure, faith in each other, confidence in themselves 
and just and not even like trying to prove people wrong. They just came in and hooped. Like not a like they talk their shit, but they hoop, you know? And to watch them do that with confidence and that result in 29 and 0 in the regular season, I think it's complete and utter bullshit that the basketball community has left them out the dry this year the way they have given everything they've said about this team for almost a decade prior. They can't shoot. All they do is play defense. Don is just a great recruiter, not an X's and O's coach. Um, they only just play with big post players. Um, they need a shooter. We got, they like all these critiques. Don went out and literally everything that they said about her, she put it on her team and said, watch me do this shit better than you do it with the players that you want. And that resulted in it. Let's not forget, as soon as the season was over, um, Bayou Barbie coming to take over the SEC. And this is LSU's year. Hell, it was supposed to be the year of the white women. Paige, Caitlin, Cam, all them. This was supposed to be here. We weren't supposed to hear nothing about South Carolina. And they went and said, fuck that shit and went undefeated. That is, that's like, that's, that's amazing. So for me, this year has been amazing. It's been beautiful and it's been so refreshing because no matter how much people talk shit about them or don't talk about them, they going to show up and bust your ass and get the job done one to 11, one to 10. Everybody's coming in the hoop. So I like hats off. I don't care what they do these next nine games. I want a title, but baby, you, you itched, itched. And to Lowe's point, this has definitely been Don's best coaching year. Um, in her career, in my opinion. So that's all I got to say. Okay. Well, going over to Craig's part of the country, to the Big 12, Oklahoma are the champs. Did you all see that coming? That game was crazy. Um, Did y'all see that, the end of that game? Crazy. Yes. That – what a letdown by Texas. I mean, they did get a lot. They – they had some post players getting in foul trouble, but just not being able to get one rebound to seal your conference championship is that was wild. It was wild to watch. But did I see Oklahoma winning the Big Twelve after they lost the Southern? No, absolutely shout out not. To the HBCUs. <laughs> and that's yeah shout out to the HBCUs no shade to Southern but yeah no I, I didn't see it um, but you know there's some Tennessee fans in here bodes well for them right like Tennessee beat Oklahoma with our Kia so so now what what um so going obviously, you know, there are some 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 teams in the Big Twelve that had to make adjustments, you know, with being without certain players. Some have, you know, lost players due to injury. So do you think that Oklahoma will double up and win the conference tournament as well? No. Mm-mm, mm-mm. No, I don't, I don't, I don't see that. I don't see that. Who who do y'all got taking the tourney? I don't know, but it's not them. <laughs> Sydney Carter is going to win the tournament for me. Thank you. <laughs> and tell us why, Shay. See, because when she posts the outfit, right, like the way that she posts it, nah, but for real, I think te- like Madison Booker is the truth. Like, okay, so it, I know this is something that we've talked about in terms of, and we spoke about it at our event. Um, the It's a different ball game when you have to play consecutive days. So obviously, um, for the larger conferences, some of the the like the conferences with like what twelve to sixteen members, some of those people are playing like two days, well ahead of everybody else, and so I think it's very rare that you'll find someone that can run the table who's playing at that opening day. So which team? I say all that to say which team do you think the back to back to back style um, of the tournament, I guess, will suit best? Who's more physically? equipped to handle that type of consecutive gameplay. I could see Kansas giving Texas some trouble. So Just you think they go tie general, out? Yeah, yeah, I don't think I think all the teams in the Big Twelve have major flaws that they could get set home. Cut time out. Excuse me. Jack Ryan, I'm not gonna let you up. 
Um, so you can start requesting. We don't during this time of the show. We don't take um, speakers. You could wait till later in a few hours if it's that important to you. But right now, it's not gonna happen. Okay, sorry y'all. Keep going. <laughs> come on, come on, teacher love. No problem. You too, um, Dev Z. Sorry. Um, also, he had the opportunity to speak to me like uh, two, three yeah, months I, ago. Yeah, I, I, I remember. I okay, remember. but back to the Big 12. All of them could lose or get upset. I think each team has a major flaw that kind of makes them questionable in the tournament. But I think it's really hard to bet, bet against Vic in the in that type of setting. That dribble when, drive. Yeah, I, you know, like, I just think, you know, he he has a style and players that just can get the job done um, in that type of environment. And he's a good coach for that type of environment. So I got Texas winning it. Um, but I do agree with Craig. Kansas definitely can can make some shake with them if Tyana Jackson isn't in foul trouble. Because Texas, I mean, Kansas is like right. I mean, I think this was last week when they picked up some good wins. And I asked you all, like, have they done enough? And they're kind of like right at that in part because you know they closed the season they did pick up two win ranked wins against kansas state and oklahoma so they're at 18 and 11 currently how many wins do you think they need to convince the voters to put them into the committee or do they need to win the whole thing I they mean, can join the they can join the committee um if they would like we gotta <laughs> talk to somebody nichols <laughs> I think if they could take, you mean Kansas, and then you mean be competitive or beat, you mean K State. I think they they're in because right now their 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 first game is the eighth, and so they have a few days of rest, and they're playing BYU. Well, not that not that Charlie's ever right, but he has them in the tournament right now. So, okay. um, I think as long as they can, you know, if they can get one, maybe one more ranked win, they'll solidify themselves for sure. Um, and just don't take any bad losses. I don't really know who their matchups are in the tournament off the top of my head, but um, if they don't take like any bad losses to like a, a TCU or something like that, um, then let's see, they play BYU first. Mm -hmm. So yeah, don't, don't lose to BYU and make it competitive versus Texas. You beat Texas, you're in, you keep it competitive. I still think you're in, but don't lose to BYU. Okay. And so now that's the Big 12. I forgot to mention this about um the the SEC. So we're going to go come back a little bit to the uh to the East Coast. Um who do you think is poised to make a run in the SEC tournament? You know, we've seen runs in the past years from likes of Arkansas, sorry, that's still a touchy subject. Um uh, we've seen Kentucky. Damn, still a touchy subject. But like is there another team that you think could really make some noise um uh, within uh this week in the SEC tournament? Um, I think. Oh, I think, yo, Coach Yo got her third seed. She ready? Yeah, she definitely can. They definitely can. If they, they defense gonna have to do really well with it, with it, which it does. But they also gonna have to hit some shots. Um, I don't know. It would have to be Ole Miss. I, it's hard for me to. Auburn could. It depends on what Auburn shows up. Um, who else? Hmm. Do you think Alabama can do something? Or Vandy? The thing with Alabama, they're big. They 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 only got that freshman big, and she's pretty decent, but they're not deep in their bigs. And I just don't know, you know, mm -hmm. that would be my concern. But they do have the Barker girl who's tough, um, the Nye girl who can shoot, but they don't have enough in the paint, in my opinion. But I don't know, maybe. They got their four seeds, so they're able to come and get that double bye. And so um, the SEC tournament, a lot of us will be there in Greenville. If you are a fan of another institution that you want to um, say something and get it off your chest for a long time to the South Carolina fans or the members of the committee, please come and find us, and you can do so. We'll see you there. Okay. And so now we're going to go out west to say – Craig, wait, Craig, hand up. Oh, go ahead, Craig. Yeah, I just want to say I think that if – Tennessee was going to do something. It's like you poking a stick. If they had the right opportunity to do something, it's, it's the right time now. Uh, looking at Alabama and South Carolina, I think those are the best two. I mean, top and bottom of the, the – I mean, top and, like, mid-tier of the conference. And that's the best time to, like, establish yourself. So, yeah. Because last – I'll give you that. Last season, Tennessee was definitely a different team 
when it came time for the the, the tournament, both NCAA as well as um, SEC. So maybe they flipped the switch and hit their stride. I don't, I don't. How can I say this? I don't. I don't want to even know. Even in that game, they beat LSU. I don't even know if that was necessarily a different team. They just woke the fuck up and LSU went to sleep. So I wouldn't even call that a different team. The thing with Tennessee is, I think they could do. They do really, really well, and then sometimes it's like a dud. So it just depends kind of with them, too. Like, how are you going to show up? Like, are you going to come out and do what you got to do? Focus. Um, Kelly, are you going to let one person shoot you out of the game? So I think with them, it's different variables, like how the girl is going to show up outside of Rakia and how is Kelly going to show up? That's their thing for me. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I have to say Ole Miss, and I know that's like the obvious or easy answer, but you know, one thing I can say about Coach O is she's a, a uber crazy competitor. Um, and these few minutes or this time, these few days to kind of mentally prepare her team to try to do something special, um, in the SEC tournament, um, is the perfect time. Same as what Craig said about Tennessee. Um, like I really think they have. They, I don't think they necessarily have the perfect roster to do something crazy, but they've got the mentality to do something crazy. And Coach O said, you know, the moment was too big for our kids when we played LSU the first time. So if they can get back to that matchup, then maybe, you know, they got a different – they're coming with a different energy. Um, and it's different when it's on a neutral floor um, and you got fans from other programs that might be assisting or just not saying shit. Why are you playing? So, <laughs> I mean, we'll see. Yeah, it's time to put up or shut up now. Last thing, last thing. Has do y'all believe that Mississippi State has peaked? Has like, you mean has what's the name? Per Pernell? Per Perno? Not too per much of Purcell. 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 Um, has he? Man, they're on a downslide right now. I don't even know really? if they're peaking anymore. I think they hit the peak when they beat LSU and started sliding down. Not slip and slide records. I mean, they could figure it out. The tournament, like, the SEC Are tournament's a perfect the time. Are they in March, Matt? I, I have no idea. But I do think that the SEC is a good time to start streaking and putting some wins together, so... Okay, let me see. Do a little quick search of Mr. Cream's Googles. They are part of the last four in. So yeah, they probably gonna find themselves on the last four out after the tournament. Sorry. Yeah, because speaking of yeah, so the last four buys are Marquette, Michigan, Auburn, and Maryland. And then last four. Hey, there's some. There's, never mind. I'm gonna leave her alone until we get there. Um, last four in: Mississippi State, Washington State, Vandy, and Green Bay. Last the first four out. Are Columbia, A and M, um, Penn State, and Villanova, and the next round are Arizona, Washington, Cal, and St. Joseph. Shout out to Cal because you know I've I, I've wanted some success for Charmin out there in the Bay, so you know that they're even considered to potentially you know fight for a spot. I think that's definitely improvement. Okay, and so speaking of Cal, we're going to go to the Pac-12. Um, we're not going to mention any of the awards just yet because we're going to get to that a little later. But we all know that Stanford is the the Pac-12 champion for the regular season. Um, we know that it's been a gauntlet. It's been the guns been slinging all year for that particular conference. There have been some who have sank, some who are swimming, or some who are kind of like dog paddling right now. Who do you think is, do you think that Stanford is the favorite for the tournament? Or who do you think is going to come and, you know, possibly pull the, the, the rug from under them? I got UCLA or USC as the conference tournament champion. I don't know. It will be either be one of them. I don't think Stanford is built for a tournament situation with their guard play. I just don't – I don't think – a big is typically not going to win you a get the game in, in, a, in a tournament setting. Like, if they don't put you away with Cam and Kiki, their guards aren't going to win them the game. Um, and I think that's the best thing about USC and UCLA – is UCLA can win with um, Charisma, and USC can win with Juju, um, and that that's kind of a major X factor for me. So I don't, I don't. If Stanford wins, yay! But I don't think they win the Pac-12 tournament. Okay, go Stanford, win the tournament. 
I don't give a shit anymore because this conference doesn't exist after this shit is over. <laughs> but I agree with Dolores. Stanford has a very big hole in their perimeter guard defense, and they can't really score to get that back. So, shit. But one thing I will say is that USC UCLA rematch round three. That shit gonna be a movie, assuming everybody advances. Yana, low. I got um, I got UCLA. Um, I think that with Bets back, they're starting to play a little bit better now. Um, they're starting to find their footing. Um, Kiki Rice is starting to finally play better. Um, so I think that they're starting to hit their stride at the right time. And if not UCLA, then I think it'll be uh USC. Dang, so nobody but I don't. Of I don't think it'll be Stanford. I mean, I. I don't think the USC win over Stanford was a fluke. I think that they struggled to guard Juju because they don't really have someone who can defend her. Um, and although I'm really hard on uh, Rhea, I do think that she does enough to be physical in the paint to help out and kind of slow things down versus Stanford. And if their guards aren't hitting, it allows, it's kind of like what South Carolina dealt with last year in the Iowa game and how um, when the guards aren't hitting they they just sit in the paint, they're going to sit in the paint and they're going to like dare you to shoot. And that's what Southern Cal did in that first game and they couldn't knock it down. So um, I don't think that game was a fluke and the UCLA game, Yes, UCLA got smacked, but I think having bets there now will make that game a little bit more competitive. And um, it'll like UCLA obviously will play better now that they have bets. Um, so, so we don't think any of the Washington States or Washingtons can sneak in win this one. No, I mean, but I do think that maybe a uh, Oregon State, uh, the same Oregon State that was, you mean almost beat by the Zay Green U- UAPB Tigers. You mean I think that they could, they could make a run. If anything, I just wanted to go in flames. I think the person that'll win this conference won't last in the the national tourney. I do like. I would like Colorado to figure it out <laughs> during this tournament. Like, I'm really rooting for Colorado. They started the season so well, and I just want them to, like, finish strong, and they've been on a nasty skid lately. So I'm hoping, like, that they don't take any terrible losses in this tournament because I think, any like, a bad loss will definitely prevent them from hosting. Um, so I'm, I'm rooting for them to do something, like, turn it around or something. Ho, 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 Craig. You say you the winner of this tournament not going to do well in March Madness. Yeah, they're they go, they, they not USC used to this. They're not, they not used to this. They're not used to this. Which one they, is it? I don't agree with Craig, Shay. I don't agree with Craig. I agree. I I, I mean, I agree with myself. <laughs> no, but I, I do believe that they're going to exert, they exert that much energy and there's going to be that much banging and that much clawing for this title that they're going to, that it's not going to, you mean, withhold itself. Come national tournament time. So you say fatigue. They get a week off though. They get like close to a week and a half off. Person that'll win this tournament won't go won't go as far as you think in the national tournament. What a matchup that is interesting though is that we just went to that ridiculous double overtime game with Arizona. And if they beat Washington, we're gonna have to play them again. And goddamn Jada is like that team, like they what they may be missing in like some of the mishaps with talent leaving. They make up for on the defensive end. God damn, they can play. all six of them. <laughs> but they also are. You mean more film is getting out? Is getting easier to scout this, and they not as physical as a conference as they think when it come. All right, watch. Just watch. So I'm picking Arizona to win the whole thing. I don't know how, but I'm I'm picking them. All right, going to the corn people, the children of the corn to the Big Ten. And Maryland, who do we feel? So Ohio State is the the comp, the conference regular season champion, and that was decided with several, I think, two games to go into the regular season, and they own it outright. 
But Iowa did get their lick back at the final game of the season between the two. So do we think that the the conference tournament will come yes, down? Yes, Caitlin those? got her physical lick back twice, and it wasn't called for neither one of them. <laughs> well, uh, the Big Ten surely does think it's going to come down to Iowa and Ohio State. They got that game on Fox. They gonna scream if it be like Penn State and Maryland. <laughs> well, if Molly Not Davis isn't playing, is it? It might. Wait, be, Dolores. It, wait, we go. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just we gonna get there. Well, I got Indiana and Ohio State at this point, based off what I know already. Mm. Well, but is it? That's they suffered a big one too. We gonna we gonna it's, see. What have we seen? Iowa is most susceptible to losing when they are not at home. This game is these this tournament setting will not be a home game for them. Um and and is in Indianapolis, so that that will do really well for Indy. In exactly. Um so I thought it's in Minneapolis. I think we'll unless see. they change it this year. I thought it's it's, it's in Minneapolis this year. Oh. And that that's still a little bit further from the corn, so Lindsay Whalen about to pull up her good khakis. Yeah, but that's who I got. Um, they, in the, in the they, championship game, they got they money long. Who? I said the way that Iowa pulled up to Dallas, they money long. Cause what? Yeah, there was a lot of them in there. It really was a lot of them in there. I think Ohio State's gonna win it. Um, to be honest. I watched the Ohio State Iowa game and I walked away still thinking Ohio State was the better team. Like I didn't expect them to win that game with everything surrounding it. Like it's senior day, it, Kalen's about to break a record, it's in Iowa, which is a tough place to play already. Um out the gates, Iowa others were lighting it up. I was like, oh yeah. This is, they're not winning this. But the fact that they were able to keep it close and get close and then, you know, they, I think they ended up losing by like 10 or something like that. Like to me, that's, it's not bad because if you take this game to a neutral court where the refs maybe aren't so biased and the others probably aren't knocking down shots that they typically haven't made all season, you have yourself a game. So I was impressed with, Ohio State and how they handle that game, even though they lost. Do we see anyone like Maryland or Penn State? No. Um, okay. Damn, Giannis. Like, it's, it's like, damn, <laughs> shit. <laughs> you can play a good few okay. quarters against Ohio State. Give us some credit. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, Maryland and Penn State have a chance. Can I say something seriously, though, B, about the Big Ten? Not about the tournament, but the Big Ten in general. Mm -hmm. Um, This is the – there have been multiple instances this year where a player from Maryland or a, play, a player parent has had to come on Twitter to talk about the racism that's happening when they're going to these away games. First of all, y'all racist can kiss my black ass. Second of all, I need the Big Ten to get on this Zoom. I know y'all are very busy praising Caitlin and doing all of that shit, but I need y'all to get on y'all Zoom because we are inviting more teams with predominantly black players into this conference, and this shit is bullshit. And I bet you my bottom dollar that if I talk to the kids at Rutgers, another team that has a lot of black faces on it, they probably had the same fucking complaint. So I don't really understand what the fuck is going on, but something, sorry, ooh, a lot of F-bombs, but something has to be done about this. Two, about the Big Ten, I don't, the Nebraska, are we investigating? Is somebody doing something to follow up on this girl's lawsuit? Because that's a very big issue, and I just haven't heard shit else about it. So y'all got a lot of nasty culture happening underneath, and I know y'all are trying to mask it with the Caitlyn thing, but I need somebody to do some work. Get on your Zooms. To um, follow up that, that's really hard to follow up. Um, To the basketball point, I do think Michigan State is a sleeper pick um, in this um, Big Ten tournament simply because they just – 
they they're really hard to guard. They don't have really any post players really, but they've got talented um guards and forwards. Um and their almost upset of Iowa wasn't a fluke in my opinion. Um they really were hooping. Um and if they have another game like that, they could take down any of the top three teams um as well. But ultimately, like I said earlier, I got Ohio State and Indiana. Okay. So now in the ACC, um, the regular season champ is Virginia Tech. You know, they had an amazing experience the other week with with College Game Day. Their fans definitely showed up and showed out. Um, but there's some there is some stiff competition in the ACC. Uh, there's your Syracuse. There's your Notre Dame. There's potentially North Carolina State if they could get it figured out. So do you see um, Kansas, I mean, excuse me, uh, Virginia Tech being able to double up and, and, and win one or, or win the, the conference tournament? Or do you think that um, one of those other teams could potentially um, go ahead and snatch that? Um, If Kitley is not available, I don't think that they make it out the quarterfinals. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I like I mean, we Amor dropped like thirty nine points versus Virginia, and they still lost. Um, I think it was thirty nine. It was it was up there. So I they they would play the winner of UNC in Miami, and I think without Kitley, UNC becomes it. That game becomes something that UNC can actually win. Um, but overall in the tournament, I got Notre Dame and Syracuse playing in the championship game, and I got Notre Dame winning. Mm. Come on, two black coaches going head to head. Yeah, that wasn't even my reasoning, but yes, I like it even more now. Go ahead, George. Yeah, I agree with Yana. I don't know about those two teams, but I do agree with Yana. Um, Virginia Tech probably doesn't make it to a championship game without Kitley. Um, as we've seen, it is very much a two headed snake, and a one headed snake ain't going nowhere. Um, for them. Um, so I think I uh, I don't know why I'm not a fan of Kara Lawson, but something in my spirit says that Duke makes a competitive run in the tournament simply because they do defend so well, like so well for that conference. Um, but I also like and I know y'all gonna hate me for this one too, but North Carolina State does need a deep run in the ACC tournament. Um, and I think they can make a deep run um, if they can use, you know, the the buy to to really lock in. So um, I don't know what the bracket looks like. I haven't looked at it um, for that conference, but just for me, let's try Duke and NC State. Ooh, but they do need a deep run though. And yeah, like they need, if yeah. they're if they're still hoping to host, they need a deep run. Yeah. So that's yeah. That's why. <laughs> So now when it comes to the mid-major tournaments, are there any out there um, that you all are excited to see? Because we know um, <clears throat> right now in the American, Tulsa is the front of that conference. So they're projected to um, possibly, you know, win the American. You know, you have you have Big East, which that's looking like that's going to be UConn's to lose, um, as it always is. Then um, for Mountain West, I'm not sure if any teams could sneak up on uh, UNLV. Um, they just beat uh, Utah State 144 to 44. So what's that? 60 points. They just got a 60 point dub against um, their in conference um, opponent, and the next closest team to them in the Mountain West is New Mexico. Um, and then of course the West Coast Conference. There is Gonzaga. Do you think all of those teams uh, win their conferences? Or do you think that, you know, there could potentially be some bid stealers? Because I do think that even if UNLV and Gonzaga were to lose, they are pretty much, especially especially Gonzaga, I think they are locks to still make the tournament. Anything can happen, but I, I think I feel comfortable in saying that they're locks. Do so you think that there's a somebody that can sneak up on them? What's that little meme? No. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> now, those teams are those teams, the UNLVs, the Gonzagas, um, possibly Tulsa's teams that can do some damage in the NCAA's. 
We've already seen UNLV get some wins. We've already seen Gonzaga knock off some Power 5 teams. So do you think that depending on how they're seeded, if done correctly, because we know sometimes the mid-major schools who aren't, you know, from maybe the West Coast or the Big East, they get the double-digit seeds. Do you think that they could make a run and be this year's um, Missouri State? Um, They might get a little upset, but like a whole run. Yeah. Gonzaga's slated to host right now. Um yeah. so I think that'll help them. I can definitely see them making it to the uh second round. Not second round, the second weekend. Um just off the strength of hosting. Uh so that's one team that I think can maybe do something. Um I also think that uh Princeton could maybe sneak up on some people. Um, I I like Princeton. I I think they uh, play well, and so they might shock some people. Like right now, though, Charlie got them in South Carolina bracket, so I don't know how much they're gonna shock. But <laughs> what about Fairfield? Shouts out to them. They're fine. They they that PowerPoint or PDF or whatever they put together the other day. They are officially ranked for the first time in. Is it the first time in school history? Or first time in a long time. Either way, they are they are first. They are. Um, so they cracked the top twenty five. Do you all think that you know they're able to get a win against you know a, a good quality team or what? It's gonna be matchups, man. Like there are some teams that to me are a little bit like highly ranked that shouldn't be, and so if they get the right matchup, then they might be able to steal one. But it's really just about matchups, like. I'm looking at Charlie's bracket right now, and we know he's never right, but he has them in like he has them going versus Notre Dame in the first round. I, yeah, no, I don't see it. But if they get like a, I don't know, off the top of my head, but matchups, it's all about matchups. Okay. And while we're talking about matchups and conference champs, of course, we have to keep in mind that, you know, the tourney could look different for some of these teams because, unfortunately, there are some who have um, – We, I don't think we've gotten an update or know the extent of what the injuries are. But last week, over the past few days or a few games, there have been some players, key players to their teams that have suffered some injuries. We um, we saw the Elizabeth Kitley injury, uh, Molly Davis, uh, Mackenzie Holmes. So which – I don't want to ask which is the biggest injury because those they're all important pieces to their team. But who's which team's identity takes the biggest hit with those injuries? Yeah, all three. Am I? Yeah, I would say all three. And I mean, um, it's easy to say like Iowa, but that's Caitlin's team, sure. Yeah, but Miley is is a is a big. I mean, I wouldn't say Batman and Robin. But Molly does hold some weight for that team. So I think all three are, if if it go bad, it's a little detrimental. Change everything. Go ahead, Craig. I think Virginia Tech takes a, 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 if the, the biggest hit, I guess you could say, in my opinion. Yana, what were you saying? Oh, I was just agreeing with Lowe. I think all three of them take a hit just in different ways. I don't know if there's a way to really quantify um, who takes the biggest hit, but I think all of them will miss those players um, if the injuries are bad. They had – Virginia Tech had this one girl, and I can't remember her name right now. When she got in for Kitley, she, she's a freshman. So, of course, it's not Kitley Wright, but, you know, I'm not super high on her. But she still had the points and the rebounds and stuff. The girl wasn't bad. She she actually was pretty good. Now, just throwing her into the fire, of course, that's a little different. But she she is solid, solid little big down there. Um, I mean, and if Georgia's still doing her thing, if I just get you where I need you, maybe. You talking about the backup B? Yeah, she a freshman, I think. Oh, the, the girl that fouled out in the LSU game in, like, four minutes? I don't know. I don't remember. White girl? Yeah. Hold on, yeah, white. yeah, yeah. Hold on, white child. Um, <laughs> no, they got the transfer from Minnesota, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. 
I don't remember her name, but she's been doing pretty decent. Yeah, her, Strat, Shrek. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah, yeah, she's been better in conference play. Mm -hmm. Um, To B's initial question, I, yeah, all of those teams will struggle in the conference play. If if those players come back by the tournament, then I can, you know, we can exhale. But I think Virginia Tech is the most impacted by it because it's very evident um, that um, Kenny coaches to those two players. Like, their entire system is predicated or 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 built around what Kitley and Georgia can do. So not having Kitley changes their entire system. Um, and uh, they they haven't done enough or prepared enough with non-Kitley players to be able to shake up, you know, to go against a Notre Dame, a NC State, a UNC, all those other teams without Kitley. So, um, yeah. Damn, he got to add more people to the group chat. I know he's sick. He's sick. See, then that's why them tears. That man was crying so damn bad on that um interview. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's it for the for the tournament. As we know, um, these are already on underway for some conferences. A lot will be starting tomorrow. Um, so next Sunday we will be watching a lot of the championship games. So you know, keep it posted here because, of course, we'll let you all know where and how to watch. Come watch with the committee. All right. Now, we're going to get, um, since we are talking about the different breakdowns of conferences, we're going to get into some of the awards. As we saw, a lot of the conferences release their um, awards um, winners today um, to some conversation, I'll say. And But we did the, we had the committee fan awards. And so, um, we want to go and discuss some of the winners. We're going to break it down by conference. Okay. ACC, the fan awards were play of the year, Hannah Hidalgo, defensive player of the year, Hannah Hidalgo, freshman of the year. Anybody guess? Hannah Hidalgo, sixth player of the year, Zoe Brooks. And the coach of the year is Shay's fave, Felicia Leggett, Jack. Now those are the fan awards that you all voted for. Now, how did the actual conference individuals vote? Player of the year, Liz Kitley. Defensive player of the year, Hannah Hidalgo. Sixth player of the year. He's going to tear that um, name up. Oh, bless your heart. I was about to say Uchiwali, but I want Okanawa. Mm -hmm. Yes, the sixth player of the year went to the young lady from Duke. Um, freshman of the year is Hannah Hidalgo. <laughs> Most improved is Miss King at Pittsburgh, and Coach of the Year is Felicia Leggett Jack. Which one of you all, I mean, which one of those awards do you think could have gone either way? Any award can go either way, right? But which one do you feel like, you know, kind of like raise your eyebrow at a little bit? Yeah. I'm not pretty straightforward. I don't think that make me raise my eyebrow. Like, yeah. I personally think, um, I'm y'all. I'm not hating. I promise, I'm not. But for Liz Kitley to win ACC Player of the Year three years in a row, that does not say anything good about that conference. It just doesn't, because at the next level, I, I don't see it. And so, if you're telling me that for three consecutive years, the best player in that conference is a player that probably won't last in the W for four seasons, I. I got to stretch my head. Like, I just do. I think Hannah and De DeAsia had better, um, more impact on teams that necessarily weren't supposed to be as good as they were, given whether it be injuries or just given the fact that people didn't believe in Syracuse. Um, so, yeah. I, I, yeah, sorry. Stats, I know they're there for Liz, but I'll pass. Okay. So the general consensus between the panel is that ACC, you know, is pretty cool. Maybe not the player of the year. All right. We're going to go to Big 12. The fans voted. Player of the year, Madison Booker. Defensive player of the year, uh, Miss Jackson at Kansas. Sixth player of the year, Deanna Gatson. Uh, freshman of the year, Madison Booker again. And coach of the year, Mr. Blazer. Rip him off. Uh, good old Vic Schaefer. Now, the Big 12 awards. The conference pick co-play of the year, Skylar Van at Oklahoma and Madison Booker from Texas. Defensive player of the year, J.J. Quinley. Sixth player of the year, Deanna Gatson. Freshman of the year, Madison Booker. Newcomer, Peyton Verlis. Verlis. Verhos. Um, 
Uh, and coach of the year, Jenny Baranchik at Oklahoma. I'm sorry, um, Peyton. I am not familiar with your last name. I do apologize. Van Hurst. The proper pr- the pronunciation. Ha, say it again. Van Hurst. You said Van Hurst? Okay, her. So, which of those do you think were um, possibly a little bit more up for grab? Um, for starters, I after when I was putting together these awards, I uh, realized that our our fans don't watch the Big Twelve because ain't a way. <laughs> like, like, I mean, y'all, like, be for real, man. Come, like, come on now. Um, but I, I like the way the Big Twelve awards shook out. Um. I, I do think that co-player of the year is a cop-out. I, I think they should have made a decision between Madison or Skyler. Personally, I would have chose Skyler Van, um, but that's me personally. Um, I like that J.J. Quinterly got recognition because she's been really good for West Virginia, and so I'm really happy that she got some recognition there. Um, and, yeah, I, I think uh, Jenny did what uh, needed to be done for coach of the year, like – she 100% deserved that. I don't think anyone had Oklahoma taking the Big 12. And even though um, no one could have foreseen Rory getting hurt, uh, but once that happened, there were still other teams that could have st- stepped up and take advantage of that, and they didn't. Um, so, yeah, I like the way the awards ended up. Tomato, 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 boo. Audie Crooks not being the at least the co rookie of the year in the conference is some bullshit. Didn't nobody expect <laughs> Iowa win shit. They lost all them damn players to either transfer or damn um graduation. Big sister Jones was at the school for 17 fucking years. Audie Crooks came into the league and said, um, baby bag Bix, I'm the widest back big and I'ma fuck your shit up and proceeded to do that against the best big in the conference at Kansas State. Literally took that team to winning games that they should not have won. Her and Addie Brown were a motherfucking two-woman wrecking crew. Audie Crooks was definitely one of the top freshmen in the conference and should have been awarded for that. Um, Madison Booker is good, great, wonderful gowns, ha ha, hallelujah. But if Audie Crooks was not listed, that's some bullshit. So, that yeah, tomato. Okay. <laughs> well, for the Big 12, um, hopefully – um, some of you will be able to watch um a lot of those games. Oh, no, because they're still gonna be locked away on on their whatever broadcast is that covers them. They mostly. typically do. The ES- they can watch them on ESPN Plus. Most of their games are on ESPN Plus. No. And then their tournament games should be on a major network like semifinals and and championship. Kia said, "I was part of that messed up voting for the Big Twelve. I was just pressing names outside. Of my <laughs> can you please?" <laughs> <laughs> and and got the nerd to be mad at Rebecca and them. <laughs> <laughs> or that man Kevin Pelton who said he doesn't he submitted his stuff already. He I have my late. own metrics. Okay. <laughs> so the Big Ten um, fan voted Caitlin Clark for Player of the Year, Celeste for Defensive Player, Lavender Briggs for Sixth Player, Natalie Potts for Freshman of the Year, and Kevin McGuff for Coach of the Year. The conference determined that Caitlin is the player of the year. Celeste, okay, y'all on the road, defensive player of the year. Um, Miss Halleck is the sixth player of the year for Michigan State. Natalie Potts and Kevin McGuff for freshman and coach of the year, respectively. So y'all knew what y'all was talking about. Now, was y'all only just watching Big Ten because y'all was watching to see um, Caitlin every night, or y'all actually watch other games too? Oh, wait. They, they can't the answer. Voted. <laughs> they can't answer. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what y'all think about those votes? Um, it sounds like the fans knew what they were talking about for the most part. I guess the sixth player of the year was up for grabs. Yeah, I, I'm okay with it. Um, I thought that Theron did a good job at Michigan State. Um, I didn't get to watch them too much this year, but from the games that I did watch, she was really good for them off the bench. Um, the only thing that annoyed me with the Big Ten awards wasn't really the major awards. It was their all teams. I just don't know in what world J.C. Sheldon and Cody McMahon aren't unanimous all team first all team members um like Caitlin and Mackenzie Holmes being the only unanimous players on the first team list was really shocking to me that was 
Sounds sounds like fourth place vote to yeah, me. Yeah, that was that was mind blowing to me. I I don't see a world where those two aren't unanimous first team in the Big Ten. And I hate to be this girl and call me a hater if you want, but Jason Sheldon had a true shot at being the conference player of the year and walk with me. Um, we know what Caitlin. So your work. We, I mean, we know what Caitlin can do. I think statistically, she is having you know a more efficient year. Her numbers are astronomical, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But that team took three conference losses this year after being the team picked to win the conference title. Um, they She hasn't really shown improvement on the defensive end. The majority of the way that we verbalize her impact on the court is on the offensive end. And I genuinely think J.C. Sheldon was a more in fact, impactful player for Ohio State on both ends of the floor. Like, even if we look at last year, when she was injured, that team looked completely different. When she showed up for their tournament run, they instantly made a deep run. This year, she was able to play a full season, and they won the conference title because of what she did on both ends. When Cody wasn't scoring or was out of the game with foul trouble, she was the person they leaned on and rolled. When games got close, I mean, when we look at the UCLA game, they ended up losing, but she was the player that got them back from double-digit deficits. Same with the USC game. I just thought on both ends of the floor, she had a better statistical impact for her team than just looking at what Caitlin did on offense. That's just my take, my taste. Caitlin's a great player, but for the conference, I do think J.C. Sheldon should have won Player of the Year. Uh, I would add Bree Daniel to second team and not honorable mention. Wholeheartedly agree. Dolores, this is for you, and 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 just just shake your head. Okay. When you hear it. <laughs> <laughs> my man, my man, my man, <laughs> my man, my man, my man. <laughs> and please know that I'm branding this relationship because I have the voice, Curtis. I have the voice. Don't play with it. Okay, so so we're gonna go to the. The Pac-12, and y'all was just all wrong, please. With the exception of one that was a, a, a landslide, um, the fans voted. Pac-12 Player of the Year, Juju Watkins. Defensive Player of the Year, Cameron Brink. Sixth Player of the Year, Gabrielle Jaquez. Gabriela, <clears throat> Gabriela Jaquez. Freshman of the Year, Juju Watkins. And Coach of the Year, Lindsey Gottlieb. Now, the Pac-12 conference decided that Player of the Year is Cameron Brink. Defensive Player of the Year is Cameron Brink. Sixth Player of the Year is Tamiya Gardner. Freshman of the Year, Judea Watkins. Most Improved Player, Kiki Iriafin. And Coach of the Year, Tara Vanderbeer and her Bob. Now, so you got two of them right. What were your thoughts when you saw, and I want Shay to go, no, I want Shay to close us out with, uh, close this particular conference um, votes out. So everybody else, y'all can go first. Pick who you want to go. I think I'll, Ooh, I was mm-hmm. shocked to see Tara win Coach of the Year. Not because she's yeah. not driven, I won't say that, but it just shocked me. But she did get that, like, the all-time winning, you know, whatever. So I, I could see it, but I guess I, I, I didn't expect it to be her. So were you leaning more of a Lindsay or more of a Corey or Scott? I think I think it probably would have been Corey if they didn't have that little slide. Um in the season sometimes. So I, I don't want, I don't, maybe shock not the right word, but I guess I felt like it could have been other people too. I don't see how Scott okay. doesn't win the award. I, I, I just don't. I don't think anyone in the conference expected Oregon, Oregon State to play like they played this year. Um, and he really like put them back on the map um, through, you know, small injuries, He's lost so many players in the last four to five seasons that, I mean, just, yeah, I I think Oregon State um, coach Scott would have definitely been my pick. But I think this is an argument on the teal today. I don't see how you don't go with Juju as the player of the year. Do, does Cam have amazing numbers? Yes. Is Cam an amazing player? Yes. Is she great on both ends of the floor? Yes. But when we look at both of those teams, 
Kiki is still there if Cam misses a game. Kiki had an amazing season. If Juju is not on that USC roster, they are not a top four finisher in the conference. If Juju is not on that roster, she doesn't drop, what, 50 plus points against Stanford. I, yeah, I, I, Juju is the conference player of the year for me. Craig, Yana? Um, yeah, for coach of the year, I was definitely a little torn between uh, Tara and Scott. Um, I'm leaning more towards Scott, though, because uh, like Dolores said, no one really expected them to do what they did in this year. Um, but, you know, I was still impressed with what Tara was able to do with a team that guard play is just really, really, really awful. Um, so, I yeah, I was torn between that one. I didn't really, like, feel any type of way about Tara getting the award. Um, Juju should have been the player of the year for me. I know that... Uh, a lot of people want to throw like stats out there and Cam's been dominant. I've been very vocal about saying that Cam is even good enough to, depending on, you know, team needs and the W, I think Cameron is a number one type of draft pick if Caitlin wasn't there. Um, like she's that good. But for me, it kind of just came down to, um, Funny enough, uh, as the number person, it was the eye test for me when it came to those two. And that Kiki Ariofen did so much for Stanford when Cameron didn't do when she like Cameron was allowed to have more bad games because Kiki stepped up. And there were like there's a lot of games where Stanford won and Kiki Ariofen led them in rebounding and scoring. Like multiple, I'm talking like just the last i'm looking at the stats now like the last maybe like seven or eight games in the pac-12 maybe more than that where airy often led them in points and rebounds and to me that just says that it wasn't just on brink to get the job done and when i watched southern cal it was Juju or bus. Like it was literally if Juju sat on the bench, they couldn't get anything done. Uh, if Juju didn't show up, that game was a struggle. There was maybe like one game or two where they had other people step up when Juju was struggling. But for the most part, it was really just Juju has to put this team on her back and do what needs to be done. And so for me, I just would have gone with her. Okay. And the Shay. I mean, I first of all, Rhea should have been first team all defense. Like what she was able to do, yes, I'm hard on her because offensively she'd be struggling. But what she did against Brink, Brink was four for fourteen, I think, in that Stanford game. What she did against Reagan Beers, what she did against Betts, like that can't go unnoticed. Um, as far as Juju is concerned, I don't it don't Cameron Brink is gonna be a lottery pick in a month. And she was on the court with Juju, and Juju was by and large the best fucking player on the court. So I don't know how you can watch that game and be like, yeah, Cameron Brink is the player of the year. When a, a 18 year old, somebody who was in a prom dress last year, walked in to Stanford and put up 50 points, I don't know how you can make that, that call. And I hate when people, I've seen this all season, and I try to let it go because I, it don't matter. Y'all nitpicking these stats. You do it with, uh, you did it with Juju and Cam. You do it with Juju and Hannah all the goddamn time. The stat that y'all seem to overlook is Juju's usage rate is the highest in the goddamn country. Higher than Caitlin Clark, higher than everybody else. So not only is she having to score, the ball is in her hands all the goddamn time. Yeah, she's going to turn the ball over. She's 18. But I don't understand how you guys can nitpick stats and overlook the important one, which is, She's being used literally half of the time to get the ball in the fucking basket. And on top of that, she plays defense. Another issue I have where y'all keep saying, oh, we'll bring this two-way and the people write two-way in caps like we can't fucking read. Juju <laughs> plays defense. And if you don't think Juju plays defense, you either A, are not watching her or you're looking at her and you don't know what you're watching. So I, I don't really know what all to say about this. Congrats, because I do think Brink is good, but it – it should have been Jew, and I don't like that, and I had the same issue with Kitley. I don't like that. I feel like these awards just go to, well, who's the senior? Who's the elder statesman of the conference? 
give it to them because they're going to graduate and you know this person will be here give people their flowers when they deserve them and before we go to the sec i want to go back and answer <clears throat> this question um for uh, no natty equals no go Ooh, your username wait her username or, or his username is no natty equals no goat. So I'm, oh, um, I'm not, I, I, okay. So uh, your question was Tulsa versus North Texas out of the American athletic could both go regardless of who wins the conference tournament or only the winner. That's a conference that is going to be a one big conference. So only the winner will go um, to the tournament because I was looking, neither of them have really big statement wins. And so, yeah, only the winner will go. The, and so if, if North Texas were to win and not Tulsa, Tulsa will probably be in the NIT. I'm not sure if um, North Texas would go to the NIT if um, Tulsa ends up winning since Tulsa is first in the American. But okay. Um, going to the SEC. The fans voted Player of the Year, Angel Reese. Defensive Player of the Year, Ashton Watkins. Sixth Player of the Year, Ashton Watkins. Freshman of the Year, Mal Malaysia Fulwali. Coach of the Year, Don Staley. And the conference voted Angel Reese as Player of the Year, Camilla as Defensive Player of the Year, Leilani Correa as Sixth Player, Michaela Williams as Freshman of the Year, and Coach of the Year as Don Staley. Um, Lo, you go ahead and start. Um, what were your thoughts on those awards? Um, I know everybody was up in arms about six women on the year. I'm going to jump you. I know you are. It's okay. I can take it. I don't think the SEC got it wrong. Um, I do on this. I would I vote for Ashlyn? Yes, I'm biased. So what? But at the very end of the day, um, Leilani was been scoring 20 off the bench all season. She's been doing that. Ashlyn and Ashlyn has been doing her thing too. Um, Ashlyn came on a little stronger later, but at the end of the day, I, I feel like they got it right. Um, they did. She she does her thing off the bench. Some she, whether her team wins or her team is great doesn't really matter. She does her thing off the bench. Now the the snub was Ashley not being on a defensive team. That's the damn snub because that's bullshit. But um, what I knew, I think I said it a while ago, Angel was going to win player of the year. So naturally I knew they would give Camilla um, defensive player of the year. And I'm not saying that Camilla is bad at defense because she's not. That's silly. But um, I, I, Ashley should have been on defense or something. That, that's the snub to me, not six player of the year. Okay. Yana, Craig, Dolores, Shay. I think for the most part, the conference got it right based on how the SEC typically votes in these awards. Um, but I think for the sixth player of the year argument, is Leilani a great offensive player? Yes. Do her numbers trump Ashlyn on the offensive end? Yes. But Ashlyn won the sixth woman of the year award when the team posted um, win shares on the offenses and defensive end for South Carolina. Um, Ashlyn leads the conference in, or is top two in the conference in both of those categories. Um, and I think we've all seen, like she is basically a walking double-double in about 20 minutes on the court. Um, I think what she does and how she impacts the team is consistent, especially in conference play. Um, and I think I personally couldn't overlook the fact that Florida started off the conference slate hot and ended up finishing the conference season with five wins. Um, and if you're if you're that impactful off the bench um, for that team, five wins simply isn't enough to call you the best player off the bench in the conference if all you could get was five wins. I disagree. Um, so th that's where we disagree. <laughs> Um, yeah, but I think when you're looking at the best or most impactful, I, I, it, to me, impact has to be quantifiable, not not only with stats, but in terms of wins and losses. Um, and yeah, yeah. So. And I, with that, I think you are looking at it as you 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 know you've added you know well the most impactful the most listeners them niggas don't look at that shit like that. Like that's a whole different that's a whole different beast that they're not looking at like that. If we looking at you on the bench, you come in, you lighten that shit up. That's what they're looking for, in my opinion. I don't I don't like Ashton's impact. Sure, like especially 
for a better team, for a better coach, for a better, you know, put together roster because we both know, sorry, Florida girlies, that that's, you know. But I think at the end of the day, her coming off the bench, doing her thing, her stats, it just is, to me, it's just impossible to overlook her and what she's done from the beginning, regardless if our team win or not. It's not a team award. It's an individual award. Yeah, see, for me personally, when I'm looking at awards at the end of conference play, it has to be a team award for individuals because what the individual does for the team contributes to how successful the team will be. Um, for me, and I and I'll just go ahead and jump over to the other awards. I personally wouldn't have picked Michaela Williams as the conference freshman of the year based on conference play. I thought Michaela's weakest period of the season was the conference period, um, but because she's a starter, because she plays for LSU, the team success ended up helping her with starter minutes. But then when I look at impact, when I look at Head to head, Malaysia had the better or equal numbers in half the time on the court. So I don't know how you separate the two basic in conference play if one player is playing half the minutes but doing the same stuff more efficiently. Um, so yeah, I think what the team does is extremely important um, in a conference awards simply because of that. But I get it. I thought, uh, speaking of freshmen, I thought uh, the snub for Tessa uh, was, was kind of outlandish. Uh, putting Del Zario uh, in there above Del some other. Del Rosio. Del Rosario. Del Rosario. Del Rosario. Del, yeah. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't think that she uh, deserved a spot on the all-freshman team. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I could, I could see that for sure. I, I think she could have been left off. <clears throat> okay. Well, that's all of the conference um, awards for the Power Five this week. Uh, we know that the other conferences will soon announce, well, the, a lot of the other conferences will announce their awards, so we're excited to see who wins those. You know, there's your Big 12, um, not Big 12, excuse me, there's Big East, or to some, the Big Least. Um, then, who, what, did West Coast give theirs today? I think, I think so. Because um, is it Yvonne? No, don't let no, 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 stop me in line. Hold on, let me find it. Um, 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 it starts because uh, I saw the um, men. Yeah, Egypt, right. You talking about Egypt? Egypt, yeah, she was a player the, of the year. Hoop, Hooper. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. I love is, her game. Is she graduating this year, y'all? Because um, if so, put her in the first round on the lottery. I mean, put her in the WNBA first round. Maybe not lottery, but if I'm a team in the W, I'm taking her. She's a senior, so she. Sh- Oh, you said, "I shit. I would like it. I really would. I really would. I would like it." She gives me what's the girl that went to Seattle from South Florida? Dulcie. Um, Dulcie. She Dulcie gives me Kajimakunu. like time out. More, what is it? Think of That's not what B said. <laughs> she gives me like a polished Dulcie with with a little bit more length and a little bit more skill. Yeah, um, yeah. all around and the ability to stretch the floor from a three point line. I love that da- Ezum player. Like, I shit, put her on Vegas Hill if there's room. <clears throat> Dulcie Fonka Mendiado. <laughs> Sound it out, <laughs> sister. <laughs> okay, so something that I want to do on um, this wasn't on the ballot today. Um, I'm gonna pencil this in on the program, Reverend Pastor. So, thinking of the draft that's approaching in just over a month, which players, um, because we, we know that um, Pow Pow um, has decided to go back to school, we know that Angel and Haley Van Lith said that they're waiting until the end of the season to, you know, make their announcement. Caitlin has declared for the draft, um, and we know that the draft will also feature the likes of uh, Elizabeth Kitley and Rakia Jackson and Charisma Osborne, et cetera, those who have exhausted their eligibility. So, as we've seen in the past with those players like maybe a Chloe Jackson, a, a maybe Kaiser, maybe Chelsea Dungy, those players that have used the tournament to improve their draft stock, 
who do you think are three players that could really benefit um, who may be kind of teetering at that lower first round, um, early second round position that could use the tournament to improve their draft style? Ooh. I think Haley can get hers back up if they have a good tournament because she was in talks and now she's not. You don't even see her name. And that's not being shady because I know how the LSU girlies get. I'm not being shady. Um, but, yeah, at first her name was everywhere. Now it's literally not. You don't hear her name as much. She's not on draft board. She wasn't even awarded a, um award today, which, you know, unfortunately it hurt her, hurt her draft stock. So I think maybe if she can have – if she has a good tournament, that could push her back into, you know, into the orbit. I want Jalen to have a good tournament. Please, Lord God, please. <laughs> Jalen, please, please, Jalen. Please talk oh yes, yes. Um, and mm. not just see the girls went from, in the words of Mariah, from a press conference to a conversation. I mean, yeah, um, fortunately. And then I don't know, I don't know a third one right now, but I, yeah, I'm rooting for honesty, uh, Scott. Oh yeah, yeah, she's a bucket. If wherever Auburn ends up, like. Or you watch her play, she that's a pro player. That's a pro score. Jessica Carter <laughs> needs a good SEC uh-huh. tournament and potentially a trip into the NCAA tournament. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, you know, like I think she's got all the because you just don't let that buy you. You that's yeah, a that's good a body WNBA body. Um, I don't know if she has a WNBA mindset, but I think the coaches will find that out when it's time to have those meetings. Um, Wait, who somebody Jessica, said. What'd Somebody said? said she's announced she's taking the fifth year. Who? Joe? Oh, she said. Who is she? Once they let us know, we'll return. Um, has Ms. Yeah. Daru exhausted her eligibility? Yeah. Has, um, I hope so. And no to the WNBA. I'm sorry. It can't, Wait. No. Hold up. Uncertainty is not a word? No, it's not. <laughs> Uncertainty is You didn't hear me say what? I don't know where you got that from. <laughs> Oh, Ejo, Yvonne, she coming back okay. this year. Well, good. We get to watch her one more year. Um, but to j- both M- Madaru and Carter seem to have some off-court um, struggles that they got to work through. Um, but I do think... Has Madison announced what she's doing? Madison. Oh, oh Miss Madison. That's it, like, I think they might stay. I don't, I just, I struggle with her. I really do. I don't, it's just been such a meh. Because you know she can go, but can she always I don't know that she can go. Madison who? What, Scott? Yeah, Scott. Scott. Chris, Uh, Scott. Gang, gang. uh, It's just, she's just been extremely underwhelming for me. And I think part of it may be the system, but I Man, haven't really she had to play point guard. Yeah, I just uh, yeah, beautiful gowns. Okay. Shay, Yana, Craig, any names who y'all think could really use a good time? JC could get her JC could get into the lottery if um Ohio State makes a deep run. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. I think we could see uh Sarah, Sarah Ashley Barker try to do Oh something. brother. <laughs> she needs to join the workforce. Workforce. I'm just looking like a scout. <laughs> a white one. Um, had to put my fire. You know. Can you? So you saying Sarah? You saying Barker going? She to definitely Dallas. going to Dallas. They need a point guard. That's good. They gonna pull us to the point. She playing forward right now. They're gonna be at the point next. On top of honesty, I think that if Norfolk State can get a win, mm-hmm. Diamond. Like I, I, I don't trust the bracket. I need to see the bracket though, because I feel like I just hate that. Good. I hate that we know where they're gonna go. It is gonna be fifteen no higher. It's gonna be sixteen no higher than fifteen. Yeah. Oh, Wusu is on that list too. They gotta make it. Well, wherever they play, if they play in the NIT or wherever. I, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, upset in the Big Ten tournament could do it. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Okay. So we're about to open the floor up. 
um, for a few questions. We're going to let y'all go a little early tonight. So anybody has questions, anything you want to get off your chest? Is that young man still raising his oh, hand? Oh, he can't come up here. I was joking. Oh, okay. For other people, we got Demo and Dr. Sterling H. Harris. Let's see. Now make sure when y'all come up here, y'all respectful. Don't drag it. I will kick you off. Go ahead, Demo. He's still connecting on my Doctor Doctor okay. Sterling is ready. Doctor Sterling, welcome to the stage. Welcome to the Hot One Hundred Three Nine. I'm mute, Doctor. What you a doctor in? <laughs> Not it. Not the big stick, Michael Basden. Oh, Lord. Yeah, I wanted to ask on Carrera, there, there was some questions. Her numbers that she averaged, what did she average in conference? Because a lot of her numbers seem like they were posted before the conference season. I'll give it to you. Give me two seconds. Google's free. One moment. Why are you doing that? What, what are you a doctor in? I really want to know. PhD in education. I know Ooh. that's right. Okay. I believe that children are future. <laughs> not. The future is them. If we all say, say they are not um, they are I not found it, Dolores. In conference play, she averaged 21 points per game, um, 46% from the field, 3.9 rebounds, 1.4 assists, uh, and 1.7 steals. Okay. She got okay. scoring. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Doctor. Right. Okay. Doctor! You sure? Doctor. That's all you need. All right. Doctor! Doctor. Okay. You sure? <laughs> That's all you need. Okay. Doctor! <laughs> if you all haven't seen that play, please. What is that? Oh, Lord. What's done in the dark? Who? Tyler Perry was done oh, in the dark. Like you can go watch it on um if you watch the stage play, go watch it on um TikTok. Uh -uh. I, I don't People... like watch, I don't like watching I don't like that stuff. Oh brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't like that stuff. I don't like that. <laughs> oh no, Tyler Perry, no. Mm -mm. Also drive <laughs> no, y'all. I was driving back to Columbia and back to Georgia. I could not listen to none of my gospel music for fear of Lauren's heathenism. Telling me to shut my damn gospel music. <laughs> I like turn that off, please. <laughs> Got the road trip extra long. <laughs> it was long as hell. <laughs> please, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I, I needed God to get me to Columbia, and I I couldn't because I head. got you there. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all you know, know when you need a little worship on the on the long not, trip. Not a little nipper and low nipperson. Yes. I got him there. I chatted. I a little the president. Um what happened to Demo? Any other questions? Chango. Yo, yo, you got some questions. You got a presser for us to watch. Come on. <laughs> Let me well, see what's in here. Uh, hey yo. We must be Tom. Uh -uh, must, don't okay, come here. Come <laughs> it was some technical difficulties. Like literally, once I got in, I hear nobody. The doctor fixed it for him. <laughs> Go ahead, Demo. What's your question, or what you got to get off your chest? Uh, not not necessarily no questions. I just had my hand raised for a long time. I had to remember what we was talking about for a minute. But um, somebody had mentioned racism in the Big Ten. And I just, we just got to remember where all of them schools are located, right? We got Illinois in the middle of Illinois, not nowhere close to Chicago where all the black people is. We got Indiana in the middle of Indiana where it ain't no black people. We got uh, both of the Michigans, right? Ohio, hey, hey. there's some black people in Ohio. Not that many, but there's some black people in Ohio. I'm just saying the racism, it be racism in in them spaces, in them spaces, because because of where they located. No, oh, yeah, I know where they located. I just like shit. I that don't mean that the players got to be subjected to that bullshit. Oh no, oh no. I look, no, ne no. I'm not okay with the racism. I'm just telling you that's where it's at. Uh, shoot, Northwestern is is 
the closest place to Chicago, and they got some real bad uh, allegations on their football tip. Uh, if y'all know about their coach, y'all know about their coach. Or I guess former oh. coach. <laughs> yeah, facts. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Well, wait, yo, wait, wait, wait. Oh, go ahead, Lo. So, hey, Stevie, I, I be talking to Stevie about hoop sometimes, so I feel like they're respectful. I know they will be. Come on, I'm welcoming you to the stage. Stevie. Hey, Stevie. Oh, my God, hello. Hey. Oh, my God, um, you have such a pleasant voice. Oh, thank you. Wow. Um, <laughs> so, okay, I'm confused about two things. I look at little Charlie's thing all the time and I know you're saying he's wrong a lot which I'm also confused by him he's had Arizona and Washington State outside the field like all this these past few weeks but their net is really good and they have really like good solid wins so that's confusing to me so do you guys think that they're safe in I'm a pack folk early so I'm really rooting for it. last year sad um so I really want them to get in and so I'd like to know your opinion I think Washington should be solidly in, in my opinion. Um, I think Arizona needs a tournament, like a run to get in um, in the Pac-12 tournament. But, And I think, personally, just me speaking, I think the net is a terrible, um, like, if y'all have been following the, um, checking the resumes that Yana's been posting, um, a, a team's net will be like three in their out-of-conference through just, strength of schedule will be like 350 so um i don't really go by net but i do think washington should be in the tournament arizona maybe bubble type tease yeah i agree washington should be in i think arizona let go of the rope they should have beat us because that would have really helped their resume they should have beat us and not let us win that game last week they kept leaving padilla wide open i was like why are you doing this Put three up. <laughs> That's cute. Um, <laughs> and then I got one more. Hey, Devontae. Devontae, he goes to Carolina. He lives is from Greenville. I think that's what he told me. So I know he's not going to drag it. Or else. Well, so he got some restaurants for us this weekend. Some liquor. Hey, Devontae. Hey, y'all. Uh, um, so... Um, I'm a student here at the University of South Carolina, so like I'm kind of like cool D. with um the students. So you know, me and Raven been talking, and yeah, she feel like you know her own teammate was snub ass, of course, for Depoy, and um, Lay was snub for freshman of the year, and I feel the same way. But I feel like you know what we gonna do? We gonna come to Greenville and we gonna turn that shit up. Excuse my language. Oh yeah, they been dropping f bombs the whole time. You okay? <laughs> Don't but, worry. Yeah, I, mean, I just I don't agree with you know the the people, and I think it's kind of weird how you know they be sleeping on us. But it's cool. And also, before I get off of here, I want to say um our student section pisses me off. Like, <laughs> uh, yes, what so. did they more than you? Yes, because I mean I try to do as best as I can because I be right beside the band yelling at them, trying to get them motivated. Cause I can't sit beside them in that dead energy. That's not me. That's not how I am. That's not how I watch hoops. I'm all in the hoops. So, yeah, our freshmen. I mean, not our freshmen, but our student session is straight horrible. Period. But that was. So are, you, are you gonna be at some of the games in Greenville? I am. Matter of fact, I'm from Greenville, so yeah, I'm gonna be there. Period. For so. You 21 days. Oh, brother. Are you 21, Devontae? I am 21. Oh, Who got the best man. drinks? Um, see, I, I just recently turned 21 in November, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm still in five points right now. We ain't we oh. ain't paying. Oh, uh, so you be you be drinking the cheap shit. And do. Yeah, I give me a little tequila sunrise and keep it pushing. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, tequila sunrise. Smart man. Yeah. Smart man. Ain't nothing wrong Not with that. Not too much on the tequila sunrise. I still. Mm -mm. Well, I get a margarita. Off, an old fashioned, you know. B, we know. 
I need. <laughs> All right, Miss Margarita, please. Period. Um, yeah, we need I, to I, hit I, up. Y'all need to hit up Jemima Mama because she the one playing our itinerary. Yeah, yeah we, 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 yeah, we, yeah, we on. Mama Muffin. But yeah, um, if y'all have some drink. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. But if y'all go like, ahead, going somewhere, that. y'all going somewhere for the tournament or this weekend? Let me know. I, I'll definitely right pull you. up. We got to turn up at Top Golf. Okay, big. And Wild Wings one night. I'll write you. Okay, for sure. All right. Also, if y'all gonna be in Greenville, Lo might um come up to y'all with a mic asking y'all some questions. And y'all said not run for me because I will <laughs> catch you. I got long legs. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there are no other hands, <laughs> wrong. wait. I thought uh, no Brandon don't be checking the chat. It's fine. Stick his ass. Wait. I... <laughs> Let me see. Okay, wait a minute. Now, but in the meantime, Devonte is kind of right. I think the South Carolina starters gonna come out swinging. I, I'm looking at the 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 how many people made the second team. And it's, it's like only Camilla was first team. Child, them people stupid. I don't think the <laughs> SEC. I, I don't think the SEC coaches really knew what to do with the team because they didn't I expect agree. them. They didn't expect the team to win. Hell, no shade, but it was a few coaches um, that was like, "It's our time this year," and their asses got lost in the first two damn games of the conference season. So when they saw South Carolina was really good, they couldn't be like, well, is Raven good? But she don't score 15 points a game. Or is is Pow Pow good? Well, she don't drop 35 or shoot 10 three-pointers a game and only make one. Is Camilla good? Well, she's got to be good. She's 6'7". Is Ashlyn good? Like, they, I don't think they really knew what to do with the team. I agree. Um, and because, uh, as the little people was arguing about, um, South Carolina can't get covered because we don't have no stars, and the only star we have comes off the bench. They just didn't know what to do with them. That really so. sounds like that. Um, the that the pandemic team. Yeah, it, that's exactly what it was. The, but the reason, freshman year, like the reason, because, yeah. the reason the pandemic. The and let's not forget, Ty was a national player of the year finalist, like top three, top five that year, and was averaging twelve points a game. So they like it's it was Shay's point earlier. Like it's all about seniority. If you pay your dues, keep your head down, don't do too much. By the time you're a senior, they'll put you on a list that you should have been on as a rookie. Because in my opinion, Raven was the best point guard in the SEC conference this year. Yep. And that will go unnoticed because people yep. looking for 17 points per game. It's yep. people on this app today that have been saying well um the best two-way guard on south carolina is lay and y'all know how much i love lay but let's be the most fucking for real that we can possibly be in the, in this country and then these same people voted for pow pow as a point guard and she's not even no point guard for the damn team like and with all due respect her being on that list I- i'm so proud of her and this is no shade to pow pow but the best ter- point guard in the nation she is not the best point guard on her team Respectfully, and I'm I'm not saying that in a mean way, you know. Uh, yeah, you said that from day one. That I mean, yeah. we've known that they they will misclassify people. Sometimes it think we think it's intentionally because we've seen they move some people around too to allow others to like hmm, gain ground on the award. And so I think Powell should have definitely been on that that shooting guard um, list, and and Raven definitely on the point guard list. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's very, what's, what's my lady say? It's really very simple. Let's check the board. Like, come on. And I, I think it's hard, like, I think, like you said earlier, like, I don't, I don't think they know what to do with them. It, it's one, they just didn't expect them to be able to do any damn thing. So now I got to rearrange my thought processes. I probably feel some type of way about it too. And it's, it's such a balanced attack. Like I say, I watch the games every game, and I'm like, okay, who's going to go off today? Who's going to do this today? So I think it's almost hard to, like, quantify in a sense because it's just kind of like, what do I do? Like, what is this? It's it's just really it's, – it's, it's a little weird. It's a little weird. So it's, it's just like a – it's a lot. And if sports – like, if sports people can't frame a talented team – that everybody contributes to like i guess my question then becomes what do you define as a good team 
Like if ever, like if you can only support or if you can only watch or you only define good hoops as a team with one player that does everything, then your criticisms aren't like aren't really don't make sense. Because last year it was everybody around Aaliyah has to be better and has to be good because Aaliyah is so good. Now this year. Everybody around Camilla is better so that Camilla don't got to go 20 and 10. So everybody on the court, maybe one day Breezy drops 15. One day Raven drops 10 and 8. One day Pow Pow drops 22. Like, so what do you, like, what do you want? Because the criticism last year said that the team y'all got this year is what y'all wanted. Now I'm hearing that because they don't got no star, y'all don't want to see them. Or because they've been beating teams in the SEC by 20 points, that that's not entertaining hoops. But as I recall, as being a hoops fan for half my damn life, wasn't, didn't nobody have no issue um, when Tennessee was dropping the girls by 30 or UConn was putting up 45 on people's head. It was the streak must continue. Well, I told you the goalpost moving in real time. Baby, that shit jumping, fumbling. And also, let me say this before we get off because I got to get it off my damn chest. I find it very funny that people on this app trying to be contrarian about the valid criticisms that Caitlin is the only player being covered right now. But when we get to the W season, you're not going to have that same energy about Sabrina. If, if, if you think that Caitlin should be the only person covered right now, when we get to the W season and, and all the hoop stuff is about Sabrina and her shoe, don't try to get up in here being contrarian because I'm going to put them tweets out and say this shoe. Because it's, it's very hypocritical, very very nasty, and it's a little bit contrarian for some for some for some um black. You know who you are, Amen. Smooches. No boss. Well, <laughs> well, with that being said, wait. Have y'all seen? Sorry, B, Have y'all seen any articles on the New York Liberty cap? No, but we, child, they had to investig- investigate Vegas. No shade okay. to you. I didn't see nothing on them. The circumcision, circumcision. Fuck, forget Circumvent- it. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. Good night. <laughs> um. <laughs> tomorrow we doing uh. You we doing be- breakdowns. Okay. We turn okay. it up on YouTube. Bring your wine. We it's turn it up on YouTube, today. and we might be turning up all weekend on YouTube. We might have a private party. So Ooh. we will let you all know I'm your private dancer. <laughs> I dance for money. Do what you want me to do. Yeah, so y'all get y'all tickets for the Aces game in Columbia because we are definitely making that a community picnic and a family reunion. I'm um, gonna be selling um gizzards and chicken wings outside, and I'm gonna have hot and mild sauce with a slice of white bread and some fries. And you can know you got that fries, take them right out the grease and let the grease burn up the piece of the bread a little bit. Oh my lord, yes. We taking, and I'm making extra coleslaw. We Call taking me. Jackie and Chelsea to um St. Andrew's Road. Call um, me we Aaron. taking the whole team to two notch and everybody gotta go to Russia's before they leave. Amen. And you get you a sweet tea. Amen. <laughs> Anything else y'all wanna add? Shout out to my family members. We got 27 tickets to go to that game. So we're gonna be in there deep. Oh shit. Well damn. Well, See y'all on the YouTubes and all the rest of the interwebs. Thank you all for joining us, and y'all have a great night. Peace. It's a wrap.